sitting in this room and listening to the speakers so far and listening to the folks outside, you sit there and you understand that it's the same issue. Everybody has the same issue, but there are two different sides to it. Mm -hmm. But both sides have the issue of jobs. These men and women want to work on the projects that the Port Authority has. Most of the other folks want to get to work without mortgaging their house, yeah. without, without their kids suffering. What I'm proposing, what Senator Savino proposed to Chairman Ward, and we hope to get a response before there is a, a decision made by your folks, we assume you're going to raise tolls. We're hearing now that it might not be as high. What we're saying is keep the resident discount at where it is right now. Yes! So whatever it was, what we're asking is make it a permanent discount, like the Verrazano Bridge. Anytime a Staten Island goes back and forth, they get a discount. We should have a business discount that allows all businesses based on Staten Island to survive the massive tolls that they're going to be hit with when this vote goes through. I'm Reverend Wozniak and I am a native of Staten Island that lived here my entire life. I was at the meeting this morning so I don't repeat myself, but I just have a couple comments for this evening. I know you said there were no questions and answers, but I do have two questions. <laughs> the first is the three minutes that I'm allowed, are they peak or non-peak time? <laughs> question is, when you repair the suspension ropes on the George Washington Bridge, will you use those ropes to make the noose that you're putting around Staten Island? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yep, this is the place. Fifteen years ago I was here, in this venue, and the Port Authority was here, and they asked us for toll increases, and they got them. Because they told us they were going to build a new Gotham's Bridge. Oh. So when you believe that this toll increase goes through and you're getting jobs, think about who's telling it to you. Yeah. We need the governor to veto this. Veto. So I ask you, put your hands up and say, veto. Veto. We want to see our brothers and sisters in the building trades working on projects that will benefit Staten Island, whether it's the raising of the Bayonne Bridge, which will increase um, our, our activity at New York Container Terminal and Port Elizabeth, whether it's replacing the Gotham's Bridge, which is critically important, or whether it's repairing and improving the Outer Bridge Crossing, or any of the other projects, including, most importantly, the World Trade Center. We want our Staten Island building and construction trade guys to be working there and everywhere else. This is not us against each other. That's right. This is about an agency that quite frankly has a revenue problem, and when they're faced with that revenue problem, they seek one place and one place only. That's right. all of our problems. They don't have a revenue problem. They have a spending problem. Why are we not looking at the fact that we're wasting $87 million a year at the Port Authority, at, at, our, at, at 42nd Street? I didn't know that, Jimmy. That's quite shocking. Where else are we losing money in this agency, and why aren't we? I've got a list. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read. I talked this morning about other states and what they're doing. Massachusetts, they are wrapping their toll booths in advertising. They're selling billboards facing Florida on the turnpike. Why aren't we looking for other revenue sources that don't come out of my pocket, their pocket, and don't get these people against each other? Authority and tell them, don't keep picking our pocket when they're not willing to look inside their own vault. That's right! When we're looking at the MTA as having the right example, and that's the resident discount at the Verrazano Bridge, we're in like an upside down world. Oh, yeah. Aren't you ashamed? Aren't you embarrassed? Uh, you don't even seem like you care, Ernesto. He's making half a million you bucks. What does he care? You make a decent salary, all of which is paid for by the toll payers. And instead of coming here and starting your remarks by saying, thank you for paying my salary, you wanted a pat on the back for no additional growth in your operating budget, and then you told the former president to shut up, even though he organized this hearing. Yes. I, I, you have to have some shame. And in terms of the process by which this has come to be, it really seems like this is less about 
how previous total increases have come to pass, which have always been hand in hand with a detailed 10 year capital plan. And it seems like this is more about trying to appease your credit rating agency, Moody's. Yes. Thank you. Moody's is not elected by anyone. They're, they're accountable to almost no one. They make all their money by rating the very same entities that they're in charge of, you know, that, that, that pay them, which is an inherent conflict of interest. And why let them dictate your behavior in, in such a manner? I mean, all we heard is the same, same argument on a national level. And even though S&P downgraded the United States' as credit rating, people still are buying treasury bonds. People are going to continue to buy Port Authority bonds. Don't be a fool. Don't let Moody's to the, you know, try and be the tail that wags the dog. But I wanted to offer four what I hope will be constructive suggestions as alternatives or you know, in addition to these fair heights. One is, and I'm amazed that the Port Authority has never sought, at least that I've heard, to explore this, is selling advertising on all the Port Authority properties. I know Senator Savino has mentioned this before, but if Major League Baseball and the National Football League think it's a good idea to sell advertising on their stadiums, why couldn't the Port Authority do the same thing? I mean, I don't really like the idea of the Qualcomm Outer Bridge Crossing or the Comrex Stockholes Bridge, but if the choice is that or this kind of an increase in rank and file toll players, sell the advertising. The other thing that I think is interesting is that you're singling out those with green vehicles to be exempt from the toll increase. Now, it's interesting because that's the one class of people that you chose to single out. Now, why not expand that to perhaps senior citizens who might have to go into Manhattan to see a specialist because they uh, are suffering from some sort of ailment, or those that live below the poverty line? And additionally, and, and the last thing that I'll mention is, I know you're not taking questions, but I think it's incumbent upon you to inform the public when these toll increases were first discussed and when they were decided that they were necessary. For those of us that heard the governors of New York and New Jersey since they had no idea this was going to happen, it had the ring of Captain Renault in Casablanca saying he was shocked to see that there was gambling in the casino. I think you owe the public that much. The mayor approved a deal to give Goldman Sachs $320 million out of his money because they didn't finish the World Trade Center on time, and so Goldman Sachs can't build their building until the World Trade Center is finished. That's a bailout. Hit it. I want an audit. Do you guys have the courage to stand up to this Wall Street crony capitalism garbage and audit? I want to know every one of these board members and what relationships they have with Silverstein Properties at the World Trade Center site, what relationships at Goldman Sachs, all of these Wall Street firms, because this is just sucking more money out of the middle class. It's more bailouts for the Wall Street guys. These guys don't get paid. Some of them, this guy does. But the, a lot of the board, it's a volunteer position. These are billionaires. These are Wall Street billionaires who take these positions because they get contracts out of it. And they get bonds, and they make commissions from selling those bonds. This is the bailouts all over again. Where's the Tea Party? I don't see the Tea Party here in force because this is the same issue the Tea Party sprung up about. It's Wall Street asking for another bailout. The other thing I want to say, oh good, I still got a minute. Uh, foreign, what is it called? Refresh my memory. Foreign trade zones? Is that what it's called? I want everybody to Google what a foreign trade zone is. Do you guys know what this is? A foreign trade zone is the Port Authority sites are China. Uh, even though it's on U.S. soil, it's China. It's a foreign trade zone. So China can come in and they bring their cargo in, no inspections, there's no taxes, there's no tariffs, because when they're in that foreign trade zone, it's like they're in their own country. Ouch. What is that? Ouch. They're going to charge us taxes. At, well, yeah, toll is a tax, right? They're yeah. going to charge us higher tolls with, because they want to promise you a job. You guys aren't getting any jobs out of this. You heard her before, 10, 15 years ago, they said they were going to rebuild the, the bridge. It never happened. It's a lie. They're, they're just using you guys as a voting block to counteract us. They keep us divided, fighting against each other, and it's all baloney to distract from the Wall Street oligarchs. And it's not an attack on capitalism. I'm a capitalist. This is monopoly capitalism. It's crony capitalism. It's sweetheart deals, and it's baloney. And you people... Yeah, and you're right, this is a show. Lou Tobacco is right, it's a show. He's here to babysit us, to let us get it out of our system. So, uh, 
Oh, time's up. Yeah. All right, well, listen. Find me on Facebook, Danny Pantel. I have a lot more to say about this. Okay, let me tell you what I've not forgotten. I've not forgotten the way Staten Islanders are treated by government and quasi-government entities every single day. Yes. It's like every single thing that Staten Islanders do, every service we get, all the services we don't get, we're continually targeted, as my colleagues have said, as the cash register, cash register to pay for services that go to people who live in other places. Amen. As Matthew Tone said, it's wrong. It's wrong to turn this into a question about whether or not we support the good, hard-working people of labor. We do. Don't be fooled right. by the Port Authority. Yeah. That's Don't right. Them. Don't let them make fools of you. Of course we want you to have jobs. Of course we want you to support your families. But so do the people of Staten Island. The bottom line is, in this economy, the worst thing we ought to be doing is new taxes, new fees, and new tolls. Yeah. The bottom line is when I talk to people I grew up with, people that have lived their lives on Staten Island, who love the soil that's under their feet, who would never want to leave here, they're leaving. New York State, in fact, has lost more of its citizens than any other state in the Union. You know why? Because every time we turn around, someone tells us we've got to pay more for less. And it's got to stop, and it's got to stop right now. Right. Yes. family who have left Staten Island. They talk about the increased cost of living here. Things like paying more for your taxes on everything that you do, whether it's your phone, whether it's to heat yeah. your house, yeah. whether it's to buy food, yeah. whether it's to stay in your house, whether it's to pay rent. Yeah. And the bottom line, yes, too, when they look around and say, we're the only place in this region, the Northeast, where you've got to pay to come or go to where you live and work. It's wrong. And if you care about if you care about this economy and you want to see it come up and you want to see it produce jobs, then we shouldn't be putting more fees and burdens on the hard-working, middle-class people that call themselves Staten Islanders who pay your salary, who pay my salary. When they hear they've got to pay more for a bridge again, you know what they're going to say? More and more of them? We're leaving. We're going. North Carolina, Delaware, Maryland, New Jersey even. Yeah, yeah. Jobs. You know how you get jobs? You know how you create jobs and opportunity? You lower the burden. You lower the tax structure. And here's, here's, here's another thing I'll say. And I see the time is short. I've presented testimony. I've written a couple of letters. I agree with the fact that Staten Islanders shouldn't have to pay a single, uh, a single additional fee. Improvements to the bridges on Staten Island, that's a joke. Anyone on Staten Island can see that's not happened in decades. Economy, that's what the Board of that the economy is suffering, so we've got all these fears, as if they're trying to tell us that there are fewer people on those bridges. That's a lie, and we know it. The bottom line is when the oil companies enjoy a 10% profit margin, we say they gouge us. These bridges have provided 50% and more profit margin to the Port Authority over decades, and the bottom line is they want more. That's worse than gouging. Yes, it's yes. immoral. Right. You've got to ask what kind of people, what kind of people would take in that much money, provide that little service, and then ask for more. What kind of people? Corrupt have, Wall have, Street well, oligarchs. I hear what I will say. It can only be because they feel that they're not accountable. That they don't That's right. So let me say this. The Port Authority, you charge that now, there's one penny more to go over our bridges. You're going to answer to Andrew Landry. Yes. We in the Senate. Yes. 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 I will, not, I will not vote to, to confirm a single board member that takes part in a fair increase. And the governor, our good governor Andrew Cuomo said, no fees, no taxes. I don't care what you call it. When you ask the people of Staten Island to reach in their pocket to pay more for a service, it's a fee, it's a tax, call it what you want. And so I'm going to ask the governor to veto, to veto, use his power. He ought to be on the record and tell us what he thinks he is. He said no fees, no taxes. The only way, the only way he will protect his word is if he vetoes any fair uh, increase that you people put on the backs of the people. That's right! We're not against you. All right, I've been a life, almost a lifelong stand out of 15 years, seems like a life, lifelong odyssey here. I pay New York taxes, I pay New Jersey taxes, and I pay Easy Pass taxes. All right, now they want to raise the tolls. They're promising you jobs. Jobs don't come out of a hat. There's no magician that's going to pull out 30,000 jobs, 160,000 jobs, whatever they say. I mean, I want to petition the borough president to actually 
make a new model for Staten Island. It's called Kick Me. <laughs> All right? We had the debacle with Easter Sunday, yep. the tolls on the Verrazano Bridge, the snowstorm, yep. and now they want to raise our tolls here. I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> Tomorrow morning, Staten Islanders at every bridge, at every crossing, you go home, take your helicopter, take your limousine back to Chris Ward, and tell them, we're going to be paying your pennies, nickels and dimes. We're going to lock down the other yeah. yeah. lock down. Lock down, lock down, lock down. Lock down. And we're going to do this every single day yeah, until we get a fair right. share. Yeah. You're not going to balance the budget of your financial incompetency on the Staten Island. That's right. That's when the increase was first raised, I, like the rest of my colleagues in government, were asked by the public, what are you going to do to stop it? And my response was, the local electeds probably have less to say in this than you, the public. It's your voice that the governors will hear that will change this, and I think it's important to get to the public. So I, I just can't get over the tumultuous, tumultuous relationship that Staten Island has had with the Port Authority in the last several months. It just seems like yesterday that uh, we had that Easter Sunday debacle where many of our constituents oh, sat in their cars for four and five hours trying to get home. What we didn't realize until the toll increase was proposed was that was the Port Authority's version of foreplay. <laughs> <laughs> the real screwing was yet to come. I did some research, and this issue of toll increases is, is happening all over uh, the country. And there was a story about Illinois, uh, and there was an article about the three R's about its toll increase. And the first R was ridiculous. And I have to say that I think in the year 2011, it really is ridiculous that the Port Authority still does the take out the garbage on a Friday late in August routine. In the era of blogs and Twitters, that doesn't win you any friends. I think it's even more ridiculous that until the elected stepped up, the only hearing was going to be this morning at 8 a.m. I think that's ridiculous. I also, I also think what is ridiculous is just the size of this increase. I mean, a 50% increase is really beyond the pal. Sure the second R was reasonable. And I think asking uh, and saying that you want to undertake these projects absolutely is reasonable. We get it. Um, but to quote those great e economists and political scientists, Van Halen, stop looking out and start looking in, as the borough president talked about.